Danny's in a fan until I fade away. About what's, going on, what's going on? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's the King and I Life Podcast back again, back again, hosted by me, your man, Soul Touch of the Poet, and my homies, Sanso Lex and Miss Phoenix. We got a good one, good one going on here tonight. We're going to talk about no more good men, no more good women out there in these streets. But before we get into that, Find us on your preferred podcast platform. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, soon Patreon. And the sounds that you hear in the background is from the artist that we interview, Sweat Artiste. Um, we got a good one. Sun Soul X, you got that sponsor for us. Yes, sir. Again, this week's uh, sponsor is... Uh... 96 Tire and Collision. They are located in Twig County, Georgia. Their address is 5610 State Road 96, Jeffersonville, Georgia, 31044. They specialize in auto body work and repairs, paint and tires. Uh, if you have 18 wheelers that need tires, if you need uh, your regular trucking uh, car tires done, they can do that. Um, Mobile homes or mobile, mobile, uh, yeah, mobile homes, sorry. Uh, ATVs, SUVs, um, if you got tires on it, they can, they can straighten you out. Uh, <laughs> if you need a new, new paint job, they got you. So anyway, their phone number is 478-945-2458 and their business hours are from uh, Monday through Saturday, 8 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. So if you're in that area, please make sure you reach out to 96 Tires in Collision because they do good work. All right, yep, yep, yep. So we're going to kick this first session off of No More Good Men, Good Women. Um, let's get ready to roll into this. Who's going to take it away? Uh, yeah, because, you know, people say there are no more good men, good women left. Um, is, that a cli- is that just a cliche or is there some solid evidence to back up that statement? Um, it's a little bit of both. It's cliche. Um, there's some evidence out there. But then again, you know, I guess it depends on who the hell you are and what the hell you're looking for and what you attract and, you know, what you accept. <laughs> that part, that part, it's the bait. <laughs> if you keep catching the same, the same stank fish, then you should check your, your tackle box. It's the bait, it's the bait. <laughs> or go and fish in some different goddamn waters. That's true, that's true. You, you know, the true definition of insanity is to repeat the same thing and expect different results, people. Yeah, you, you you can't can't do, uh, I think that it's for the catfish. There are still good men and good women out there. I, I really do believe that. Um, Wholeheartedly believe that. <laughs> I just think that it's, again, you know, how both of you guys were saying, it's, it's all about what you're willing to accept and what you're not willing to accept. Um, I think we've come to a place in our society where we feel like it, it comes down to a, a lot of social rankings, um, if you will. Like, you know, how much money is this man or this woman making? And can that help me have a comfortable life? So um, I think there was a time where we used to look past, you know, what is it that you can do for me? And we're at a place where what can we do for each other? You know, what do we both bring to the table? What can we build together um, Mm -hmm. that's sustainable? whether that be, you know, with love or um, building a family or, you know, having a special someone to back you up as you, you know, climb your your ladder or corporate ladder or whatever career it is that you're in. I, I definitely believe that those times to a certain extent have come and gone, um, unfortunately. But I, I still believe that there are good men and good women out here. It's just a matter of finding the right one where you both can benefit from the relationship. That part. So I just feel like 
a lot of times whenever um, the whole no more good men, good women um, is said, it's, it's a broad stroke against both sexes by people who have been scorned by, by someone um, who put the time and the effort into someone and then didn't get the results that they wanted. And instead of taking the time to properly heal from that, they ran out and got right back into the same kind of relationship. Basically, we tend to pick the same kind of person, but just a different person, if that makes sense. Yeah. You, 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 you are attracted to a certain quality about someone. For me, I'm a fixer. Um, I don't look at what you have or what you can do I look at what do you need from me to help you get to wherever you're trying to go. I want to fix. And a lot of times people think that they can take advantage because I have that personality. So I have to pump brakes. And then whenever I have to pump the brakes, then there's always an issue because in the beginning it's, oh, she's so sweet. Oh, she's this. I can depend on her. And then whenever I see that you're not doing back, that's on me. That's not on you. I gave too much and I didn't, I didn't demand it back. So you took advantage of it. So I don't feel like there are no good men. I just feel like sometimes men or women can get into a situation where they give too much too soon and people fall in love with the hand instead of the heart. Yeah. And, and to go along with um, part of what you were saying, you know, a lot of people have this issue because uh, I know I had this issue a long time ago. The best way to get uh, over somebody is get under somebody else. So, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people are doing that. And, you know, you may be a good person, you know, coming out of a bad situation, but you don't always make yourself look like a good person. And you don't always make good choices when you're moving like that. Like when, when you feel like you're in a bad situation and you think ain't nobody else out there good enough or this, that, and other ca- case may be, what you need to do is sit your ass down for a minute reevaluate yourself your choices what you want where you want to go and then mm-hmm. once you get whole or or whatever you feel is whole enough for you to move forward then you go out there and, and look for somebody that that's that's good for you um and, and on top of that i hate when people say don't go looking for this that and other like if you don't look for it, how the hell are you gonna find it everything ain't looking for you um exactly. every, every, everybody don't know you available um and and you know that makes people um, feel uh, get get feel a little scorned or whatever the case may be because they feel like ain't nobody checking for them this that and other so now they score now they're a bad person it's like hold up Slim. you need to humble yourself first of all because if you can't humble yourself and you out there saying ain't no good men or good women out there maybe you are the determining factor of what's good and what's not good out there because. If you putting off that energy, then you are the source of that energy. So you can't be saying there's no good men or good women out there and, and you're not presenting yourself as a good man or a good woman. Exactly. I mean, the, the way that I, I look at it is like this, right? Which each relationship I've been in and the current relationship I'm in now, um, every relationship I had before I uh, got married, I look at it as an educational course meaning like I paid for that course dearly like whether it be financially uh, emotionally uh, spiritually it's kind of like taking a damn college course you know you go in there expecting the the best out of that class and and sometimes that class will let you down you know sometimes you'll be a, a straight A student in that class and then sometimes you come out with the F so, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> but the, the main thing about it is you got to learn from that that particular class, that particular uh, relationship, and move that on. You know the good things that you learn from that onto your your next uh, relationship or situation. But again, like King was saying, you definitely got to give yourself that space and time to okay. I've had the rug, you know, snatched out from underneath me right now. So Mm -hmm. let me uh, kind of pick myself up and dust myself off and and get myself back in line before I proceed to the next course. Correct. Because what we are in 
as a whole is good guy, good girl gets hurt by bad guy, bad girl. They move to someone who isn't hurt and they hurt that person. And it's just mm-hmm. a repeated cycle. It's a, it's a vicious circle of damage, just yeah. damaged goods running around here instead of people realizing, hey, I haven't, I haven't healed from this and I haven't processed this. And, and I keep trying to explain to people whenever they come to me with their problems, um, I keep trying to tell them when you're reaching in to save someone that is broken, those shards are going to cut you. And some of them are going to cut you deep. You, you have to realize and recognize as an adult that this person is hurt and I'm not a therapist and I can't heal them. And if I deal with them, I'm going to be the one damaged. Yeah. So there has to be a responsibility to yourself to say, I need you to work on you for you and come back and visit me when you've, when you've worked things out. Um, too often we feel like, okay, well, you know, they, they good and, and uh, yeah, they got a few problems and I'm gonna help them with their problem. We are not therapists for one another uh-huh. at all. Um, and when we take that, when we take that on, um, it's, it's heavy. And, and you, I hear so many people say, love me enough to help me unpack my issues. No, sir. Mm-hmm. No, ma'am. Man. <laughs> Man. No, sir. No, ma'am. <laughs> I'm oh. going to need you to take your luggage to a licensed travel agent, which is a therapist in this exactly. one, because I cannot help you unpack that baggage and not be affected by what's in your suitcase so we as adults have to start pulling back and saying yo I like you but right now you have more issues in vogue and I don't even want the subscription you gotta find a breaking point you just it's it's a I need us as as a people to understand that it's okay to protect my mental and my emotional And if it means cutting you off before it gets started or in the middle of, if you start showing me signs where I'm like, if I keep, if I keep loving you, I'm killing me, it's time to move around. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. So it doesn't mean, so it doesn't mean there are no good men and there are no good women. I think we are all inherently good, but some of us are just damaged, whether it be childhood trauma, adult trauma, relationship trauma, um, we are inherently good because when you first start talking to someone that representative that we talked about is out but that representative knows to be good and how to be good a good person in in general um it's just whenever you get comfortable with someone that you know you you truly come out and when that happens we should be able to take a step back and be like yo this is not gonna work yeah, and to add one more thing onto that, um, you know, well, a couple more things. You know, we should not allow someone to guilt us into feeling like we're doing the, we're being a good man or a good woman. And that mm-hmm. goes to what, what you were saying. Um, if that person is damaged, don't think that you're a good person by staying with that person and don't let that person convince you that you're good for staying with them. Nah, get up out of there. Get mm-hmm. up. Uh, quick yeah. quickly um, quick yeah and you know because I, I you know I've had that experience with people saying accept me how I am uh you if you care about me you'll help me unpack my baggage it's like I, I, what do you mean you want me to put on your bullshit in my luggage I'm not doing that exactly doing that. <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a good enough man to you to let you go and do what you need to do for yourself because mm-hmm. I can't mm-hmm. be a good man holding on to you, holding on to your baggage, and, and we trying to walk together, and I'm carrying all the weight. What are you carrying? You just throwing your dump your bags on me. That doesn't make me a good man. That doesn't make you. No, it makes me an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> when it makes me an um, idiot. <laughs> straight up. I don't. I don't know where in society it got misconstrued that to stay with someone that is damaging you as you being a good man or a good woman, but that's some BS and it needs to stop. 
Um, I was I was told in a relationship that if you were a real woman and if you really love me, you would just ride through. I thought you, he said to me, I thought you was a soldier. Brother, I'm here to fight with you, not for, you think I'm gonna fight you to love you? That's what you think? Boy, if you don't wake up, but his, his, his female family members were saying, any good woman would love you through. Uh, well, he can't help it because, you know, he went through some things when he was younger. If we don't stop using our childhood trauma to justify us being adult buttholes, mm -hmm. then we'll never get anywhere. So never. it's not, it's, are you choosing to be a good man or a good woman? It's a choice. Yeah. Forget. You choose to be good or you choose to not be, and you choose to say, well, I'm this way because when I was nine, my mama put a perm in my hair and took all my hair out and I'm bald headed. And now I got issues with everybody because the boys in third grade made fun of me for being bald headed. What? <laughs> what in the hell are you talking about? So it, it's the same, you know, I hear so many of my, my peers and coworkers saying, oh, you know, she, she a good lady though. You know, she was, she was molested as a child and that is horrible. But it doesn't mean that she gets to be like that to you as an adult. That's yeah. not, you not helping her by staying and dealing with that. Mm -hmm. Because all she is doing is lashing out and creating hurt and pain for you to make herself feel better. Selfishness at its finest, narcissism at the minimum. So I, I get to the point where I'm just like, is there, is there good men and good women out there? Of course. Do they choose to be that? Some yes and some no. Yeah. And so with that being said, uh, good men, good women with are everywhere. Are they just mm -hmm. being overlooked or are they being uh, some men and women being too picky? They're all in relationships trying to prove that they're good with the wrong person. <laughs> no, some, I think some people are truly too picky. Um, I, I think that before you check off a list of what your, what your mate should be bringing to the table, you need to check that same list off with yourself. What are you, what are you taking to the table? What are y'all? What are you what are you so great at or what is so great about you that you feel like you can ask of these things of a mate? Like, you know, he has to have this, he has to have that, he he, he gotta have a good job, he gotta have good benefits, he gotta have his own crib, he gotta have his own car, I don't want him to have kids, you know, I don't you want you you're asking for these things and you work part-time at Dollar General. You drive your mama's car on Thursdays and Fridays. Every other day of the week, you catching the bus, and you got four kids of your own back here that you bring in. So what I just sometimes I just I, I seen a post from a dude that I know for a fact is in prison. He need an independent woman. She gotta have her own crib. She gotta have her own car. She need to be making at least six thousand a year. Like literally posted this on his Facebook page, and I know for a fact he's in prison. I know who he is. Like literally. And he's like, you know, she, if she has kids, it needs to be one kid at the most two. And they got to have the same baby daddy. And I'm looking and I'm like, bruh, you on year seven of a 14 year bid in the feds. How are you asking for this? Like, uh, what makes you think that, that you have a right to ask this? Because what are you bringing to the table besides an ex-con? with a felony then you can't really get anything in this world because felons are labeled for life right so the audacity of him whenever i read that me and my friends that actually know him oh we've had a good girl talk about it and, and a good laugh but mm -hmm. he's no different from these women that are saying i need a man to have x y and z you're being too picky and you you um if we were a fruit tree you would be the low-hanging fruit so don't let that go over y'all's head. The low hanging fruit, the good fruit's at the top. 
The right. low-hanging fruit is almost rotten and about to fall. So I need you to be honest with yourself and stop being so darn picky because I think a lot of women who say there are no good men have a checklist that's a mile long. Um, speaking from a woman's pers- perspective, unrealistic expectations of what a man should be it, is keeping a lot of brothers in the friend zone. A lot of men are in the friend zone because they don't meet this certain image in a woman's mind that she thinks makes a good man. I don't know about women from a man's perspective, so that's on y'all. I was just about to um, jump into that because, um, but I, I totally agree with what you're saying. You know, you need to be accountable for yourself before you account for, you know, what somebody else brings to the table. Um, you know, be secure in what you have. Um, and, and if you have a list of <laughs> wants, make sure you surround yourself around people who are in your how did you say it on that um that, that uh, the other episode? That we- <laughs> Nasty, here you go. Get ready to get make son get on to me again. <laughs> Be in your league. <laughs> yeah, date in your league. You know your league, like you know serious. your tier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't, you want to be, don't. you middle tier, you trying to date up here in the Platinum Plus Club, that's not going to hey, match. Hey, you know, you, you, nah, don't, don't do that. Stay, stay <laughs> where, where it's comfortable for you because, you right. know, if, if you, I don't care what you're making, as long as you're progressing, but don't sit there and, and have a, a, a caviar a- appetite when you got goddamn lunchable goddamn diet. Don't, <laughs> you, you cannot do that. It's it's ridiculous. Um, as we say, as we say here in the South, she got champagne taste, but she got Kool-Aid money. <laughs> you you gotta you gotta stay in your Kool-Aid budget, baby. I know you want that champagne, but you're not yeah. there yet. <laughs> but but you know the thing about it when when dudes are looking at women, um, the one thing that you have no have have to realize and notice in these times is women flash themselves out there so much as objects of desire that these dudes want that that they're looking at the vanity of a woman they're not looking at the personality of a woman they're not looking at all these other qualities of that that a woman has or possesses they're looking at this objectified thing and then mm-hmm. when it comes down to them being able to converse or interact with women you know, in their world, who may be in their tier or, or, you know, a half a tier above or half a tier below, they have these unrealistic expectations. It's like, why do you have expectations like that? Oh, I want mm-hmm. the fat ass and this, that, and the other. And it's like, um, where you live, are, are you, where you live, work, and hang out, are these type of women accessible to you? And if they are, right. if, if they are accessible to you, <laughs> Are they within reach for you? Like, can you can you go up to one of these women and have a conversation that's engaging enough for you to get her her interest and hold her attention span? Or are you just this Mr. Oh, I saw this shorty on Instagram or TikTok shaking it up. Oh, she looked like her, so I'm gonna go holler at her and see what's up. No, 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 no. It's no. like what is what what substance do you have to bring to the person that you are pursuing? And right. you know, last time I said stay in your lead, son, I thought was gonna burn me <laughs> with his rage. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm curious for him to weigh in right now. <laughs> uh, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it in, but I get it now. So we good. We good. I promise. Um, my thing is this, right? When I, I hear a lot of brothers uh, and sisters talk about it, they got to be uh, 6'3". They got to make over 100000 a year. They got to have uh, this type of car and live in this type of neighborhood and running this type of circle and, and vice versa for, you know, me and for she got to have a fat ass and, you know, she got a, well, I ain't gonna say that, but she, 
<laughs> she she got to uh, uh, make this this amount of money per year. And, you know, mm-hmm. she got to treat all my kids like they hers. And, you know, she got to put my, my family, you know, my kids first before her own. And I'm thinking to myself, you people really got <laughs> issues. I whole mean, time they over there with a bottle of yeah. sea salt and a pack of ramen and sharing with the roaches in their house, but she need to have a condo. Um, and I'm like, <laughs> the, the thing about it is there's a time again uh, where people actually look for love first. Like, is this person actually love a boat? And then you have to ask yourself that same question. Am I lovable enough for this person to love me? Mm-hmm, but I, mm-hmm. I think again we've gotten away from you know those circumstances again we we talk about the table too much what do you bring to the table and mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with that please don't miss uh what i'm saying but i i look at you know my my old uh, elder family members the ones that are still married mm-hmm. uh, that, that still you know went through the 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 storms and, and, and still got it together you know they just didn't run away at the the sign of the the, the pressure you know the pressure mm-hmm. comes and goes you know your ups and your downs but again the thing about it is like uh phoenix is saying you know what do i as a, a person what do i contribute not only to the relationship but in the pursuit of my mate to make them better in their pursuit mm-hmm. of whatever it is that they're trying to do and vice versa. So, and I think that's lost. And I think that's uh, the whole, like you said, too much emphasis is placed on the table. Um, what about away from the table? So <clears throat> transparent moment. Instead of me praying for a good man, I pray for me to be a good woman. That is my prayer. It's 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 constantly work on me and, and show me how to be a good woman um, because I want to recognize a good man when he's when he's presented to me. And if I'm not in a clear headspace and my feelings are not healed and in check, that opportunity is going to walk by me and I'm going to never know. Um, a lot of times I hear women say. Oh, girl, he's too nice. Blows my mind. Blows my mind. I know, I know a lot of good dudes that have been told they too nice. So you want somebody to fly upside your head and you want somebody to call you out of your name and be disrespectful, but then you twist your mouth up to say, ain't no good men left. Excuse me. Johnny Ray over here be waiting on you hand and foot. You and your seven babies. But Johnny Ray too nice. Uh, Girl, he too nice. My kids be running him over. You should you should stop that. He don't even say nothing to them. They be doing stuff and they he don't say. They're not his kids. Uh, He's being respectful by trying to give you the opportunity to get Ray Ray and Pookie to go sit down somewhere before he kick him in, in the shin and tell him, you know, get away from me, then you're going to be mad. Because I'm the type of person that if your kids are unruly and you don't say anything, you're not for me. That, and that's even me with friends. Like if I meet females and y'all come through or I come through and your kids are all over the place and you don't say nothing, I can't hang with you. You got little rugrats and heathens. I don't got time for that. But women, women have have the audacity to think that if a man is cursing them out or I heard one girl say I mean you know I got a slick mouth so I need somebody that's gonna you know you know put me in my place (laughs) I don't get that I I just I literally look at women sometimes and I for me especially in my age range I just look at them and I just be like and this is why I say to myself because y'all sound like y'all are 19 and brand new to the world we are too old for this. We are too old for this mentality. I hear men say, I, I have heard men say, let me say this. Um, I just want a woman that don't say nothing back. Let me be the man. I'm going to say what it is and what it ain't. And that's going to be that. Wait. <laughs> are you in a place where you can lead like that? 
like again what roles that people are wanting other people to play I need them to reflect that are you capable to lead for a woman to not have to step in and say anything and ma'am are you capable to keep little pookie them in line so Billy Joe can be a good man and a good father figure I, I just don't get it I don't I don't get how people say they want a good man or a good woman, but in their mind, their ideal of a good man or a good woman isn't even close. Not at all. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely something else. I will say this though. I, I did have a relationship uh, in my younger years uh, when I was in my early twenties and I was dating a female. She, uh, she had uh, three kids. Uh, you probably heard me talk about it before. Um, you know, I fell in love with the kids. And after we went our separate ways, I was missing the kids. But the point that I'm getting to is with that relationship, because every relationship she had before that to a certain extent um, was toxic, um, where her and some of her uh, previous boyfriends were getting like fist fights and shit you know, knock out, drag out. And there was even an incident where, you know, they took their cars and ran into each other. So by me He's being- a brave the, soul messing with Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the person that I was at the time, I'm, you know, so in love with this, this person uh, and wanting to heal her, I wasn't quite in the right mind frame to understand what it was that was actually taking place. Um, again, she had too much baggage and I didn't know how to unload it. I just thought, well, you know, I can love this person enough that, you know, she she gets it when she sees that I actually love her to the point that I'm trying to heal her. But that healing never took place because she wasn't open to it. She, exactly. she thought, you know, she didn't you recognize it. Yeah. If you don't beat my if ass. You ain't, or, exactly. If you ain't going upside my head, you don't really love me. Yeah. We, that's we, what love is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't there so yeah <laughs> yeah it's like uh oh girl i did da, 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 da. girl he must have beat you up no girl he do not oh girl he ain't the one he ain't the one because a real man would have did x y and z i hate to hear women say that what do you know about being a real man you're not a man <laughs> you are not a man how, how dare you fix your mouth and say what a real man is come on man don't don't do that but yeah it, it's when they're prone to, um, like, I had to tell a guy who liked to throw that B word around. I had to tell him. I said, you know, your problem is you weren't taught respect. I said, you grew up hearing your mama get called out of her name. So it's normal to you. I said, it's so normal to you. You call your sisters that and your nieces that. And they don't bat an eye because it's the environment you were, that you grew up in. Oh, yeah, black women just put too much emphasis on the word. I said, no, you are, you are saying it to be disrespectful, but because you grew up around disrespect, you don't even realize it is disrespectful. It's normal to you. I said, and you and I are not going to work because it's not normal to me. It's offensive. And I know it's meant to be disrespectful. Oh, it's just a word. It's just a word. Like he felt like, and he still to this day feels like, it's just a word. And if you know you're not a bitch, then you shouldn't be offended by being called a bitch. No, your logic is off. You should respect me enough to not call me that. And what I'm going to say is, I don't know how women or men think that it is love to be abused physically, mentally, or verbally. I don't understand that. I do understand that when we are genuinely trying to love them past that trauma, we're going to lose every time. You, yeah, you were destined to fail. You were, son, you were destined to fail because you were something that she didn't know anything about. You, you weren't that, that thug love that they like. <laughs> she, mm. <laughs> she, she want that thug love and you were not that. And mm. I just, she didn't know what to do with a man like you. She was going to sabotage it regardless. No matter what the issue was, she was going to wind up sabotaging it because you were not what she was used to. Them, that's them Prince County girls. <laughs> I was, uh, <laughs> to, you know, we was talking about what people bring to the table. 
And, you know, people always talking about they want that person to bring six figures, this, that, and the other, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, one of the problems that people have, they look at six figures and think they think it's six figures. But, you know, if a joker is making like 100, 100, 500, 10,000, best believe that motherfucking take home income is going to be at least 20, 30 dollars less than that. So, mm-hmm. the joker talk about, well, I make six figures. What the hell are you bringing home, first of all? Yeah, we, we don't want to hear about your net. I mean, we don't hear about your gross. We want to hear about your net. What's your net, baby? What's your uh, net? <laughs> I don't know. People. I don't know. What were you saying, King? Um, no, nah, that was all I was saying. That was all I was saying. On that. You know, I'm... I'm Women go and get their bodies done, and and men get the nice cars. Um, it's all to attract. It's all to attract a certain type. But I've I found that it usually implodes, and it's because it's superficial. Once you get past that surface, that's where the good woman or the good man is at. And if all you have is a surface, when you scratch the paint, it's going to peel and there's going to be nothing there but primer. So I, I don't, I think you should, I think things would be better if we went back to the way it used to be, as Sun was saying, and focus on, am I lovable? Or are they lovable? Like, where can this really go? Instead of, ooh, he makes six figures. Ooh, she got a fat ass. Where I sometimes I think, how did we get here? How did we get here as a whole, as a society, to where you always are going to be attracted to what catches your eye? I get it, but now it's just we have Barbies and we have narcissists who make a hundred thousand dollars net, and they're not good people, but people are putting up with them. People are putting up with them because she looks good on my arm or he, you know, he's banking. It's crazy. It's just crazy. I know what the problem is. Um, people watching uh, Animal Planet and all these other shows the wrong way. Uh, <laughs> and, and I say that because it, it's funny, but but if let, let's think of, let's look at it like this. When you watch all of these shows with animals, the male animal is always, well, not always the male, the male or the female animal is always doing something to attract the mate. Now, people, for, for whatever reason, they probably look at this and say, oh, well, I got to do this and do that. And, and if I do this and I do that, I'll get that. I'll get that one. I'll get that one. But their mentality is so messed up and when most animals do that, they're looking to produce young. Mm-hmm. Not to hold on to whatever they're looking for or whatever they're after. People have this problem where, all right, I'm going to do this to get the girl to get the girl, and that's going to be mine. But that's not what the hell your intentions were. You just wanted her attention or his attention. You just wanted a piece of ass, and, and that's what you really wanted. But you acting like you really wanted that person and you need to get out of that mentality. If mm-hmm. you are doing all of this to get that person for a good time and not a long time, go into it presenting yourself like that and, and you'll be better off in the long run when you be honest with yourself and that person. Instead of mm-hmm. doing all these tactics thinking, oh, I got to do this to get this person and keep that person. So get out of here with that. Well, um, is looking outside of your race an option? Ooh. I would say ye. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I will have to honestly say you you, you love who you love. <laughs> um, if that's what you're attracted to, then that's what you're attracted to. Gay, straight, skinny, fat, blue, green, yellow, purple, uh, alien, indifferent. I don't think looking outside of your race is is the answer. It may be an option for 
your individual situation, but overall, I don't think it is. Um, I've known some decent women of other races, but for me, finding a good woman in another race, I don't think I would really invest that type of time because that's just not where my head is at. So for me, it's not an option, but for other people, do what you do. I would say for me, uh, speaking, if I was a single man, I, I would definitely explore other options, meaning uh, date outside my race. True enough, I, I love uh, the women of my culture, no doubt, hands down, came from one. But um, I will always make that my first option, but I would definitely not cut off other options. Um, there are some probably higher on the list than others. <laughs> I will say that. Uh, but I, I think when, when people generally sit down and think about what it is that they want at the end of the day, I think we all want love. Um, you know, some people find love in, in, in all the wrong places and all the wrong things, but at the end of the day, I think we all want somebody to love us as much as we love them. So, um, again, wh whatever floats your boat, whatever gets you there, you know, do your thing. Um, me personally, I, I would definitely consider that if I was single. For me, um, there's nothing like a black man. It's just my preference. Um, there are so many good men of color that I don't have to look outside of my race um, for a good man. Um, it's not to say that there aren't good men in other races. My personal preference is and will always be a black man. Um, for, for whatever reason, um, women of color are told that men of color cannot love them um, correctly or they don't love them enough or whatever uh, is being said. But when a, when a black man loves you, genuinely loves you, can't nothing touch you, nothing. I've dated, I've dated um, outside of my race for albeit of two weeks, because I was like, okay, I tried it. Okay, nobody say I didn't try it, but this ain't for me. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't gonna work. <laughs> this don't work for the kid. But at the same time, I found in those two weeks, he's no different from a black man or an Asian man or a Hispanic man. It, it, we're people. At the end of the day, we are people. And there's no, there's no skin tone that says, oh, this is the, this is the good mix over here. Or this is the better over here. So to think that you have to look outside your race to find a good one is ridiculous because people are just people. Um, if, if white women and Hispanic women and Asian women can find good black men, then black women can find good black men and vice versa. Um, I have met women who say they only date white men. Um, I have met men who say I only date Asian women. Um, a lot of times I hear men of color say I date, uh, um, I date outside of my race because the women are more cooperative and they have less attitude. Um, well, then I hear women of color say, well, I date outside my race because um, they're good fathers and they're good men in general and they hold good jobs. I just feel like if you truly get with the right person that you're on board with, the same page with, everything will come up roses. And it doesn't mean I had to date outside of my race to find it. It means I had to date in my league to where somebody was with the same goals as me, looking on, on the same path as me. 
um, again, though, as the fella said, teach their own. Whatever you eat don't make me shit and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Sure. So with that being said, uh, we want to thank everyone for tuning in to the King and I Life Podcast. Uh, it's always a pleasure with my fellow uh, host, Soul Touch of the Poet, Miss Phoenix, and I am the kid they call Sun Soul X. So make sure you guys t- keep tuning in on all major platforms for uh, listening to our show. We are also on Facebook. We are on YouTube. And we're still working on that Patreon. So <laughs> I know we've been saying it for a while, but we're, we're trying to build up a catalog for you all. So again, just, just keep us in mind. Be patient you know, with it. For sure. On all major podcast platforms. That's a good one. Y'all can't hear the music in the background? Yep. But it's uh, catchy. Yeah. And you're still recording. I know. <laughs> All right. So this would be part. Let me start writing this shit down. Yeah, I'm that. writing it down too. Okay, we got part one. Mm-hmm.